Lovecraft Country is um, a very unusual tale. <laughs> well, I thought the world was one way, and I found out it isn't. And it terrifies me. We've got monsters and zombies and strange creatures and magic. It's just a wicked show. In a time of digital era overload, when the concept of convergence culture is at its highest, a series premieres on HBO called Lovecraft Country, which is drenched in African-American folklore, tradition, heritage, and black magic. And this is how I knew it was a powerful show. Most people who I spoke about who are in the film industry or the TV industry didn't talk about it as if they were in the film industry or TV industry. They spoke about it as fans. Like, I love this show. I love Journey Smollett. Like, I really do. And uh, I enjoyed her in Underground. And so when I heard about this, I was like, oh, let me watch this. And then when I was like, it's some sci-fi, I'm not really into sci-fi. Um, more into psychological sci-fi than like visual, like what's that on his head, sci-fi. Um, like time slide stuff, I like that better. But then I started watching Lovecraft and I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. I I thought it was unlike anything I've ever seen before. It was, it was incredible. It seems like Jordan Peele has uh, really uh, figured out a, a way of, of pre presenting this history in a way that still grabs people a uh, mass population that might not be tuning into like a uh, Henry Louis Gates series on PBS on uh, on Reconstruction. The response to this program, the many electronic transmissions of the series from the actual show to podcasts and even academic style breakdowns to make sure each episode and all the elements it entails are understood, peaks of the interest of this ethnographer. To unpack this properly, for those of the small group unaware of this program, let's break down what the show is about, from where did it come, and who's responsible for this very profound folk narrative. So the, the story actually began as a failed TV series pitch. And when I originally pitched this as a TV show, I just couldn't get any interest in it. I just can't figure it out. So I went back and spent about five years figuring out how to make it work as a novel. Lovecraft Country is an adaptation of a 2016 dark fantasy horror novel by Matt Ruff, which explored the conjunction between the horror fiction of H.P. Lovecraft and racism in the United States during the era of Jim Crow laws, as experienced by black science fiction fan Atticus Turner and his family. And that's what's so great about Lovecraft Country is that the author of the book, who's a white guy, took all of Lovecraft's biggest uh, uh, creations and put them in as racist, as racist tropes, and and made it made it so that racism is the villain. Lovecraft using someone who was uh, very much into a lot of those things, but also was very much a white supremacist, taking what he did and kind of turning it upside down, inside out. I think that was a brilliant thing on the part of uh, Misha Green and uh, Jordan Peele and J.J. Abrams. I, I mean, to me. That's like the magic of the whole thing is to just take something like that and invert it. So since this is almost a response to Lovecraft, the actual writer, and his influence of horror and sci-fi writing, along with his ideology, who in fact is Lovecraft? Howard Philip Lovecraft utilized folklore and traditions in his influential American horror and science fiction writing. Born in 1890, his works of the early 1920s through the 1930s expressed his ideals of an Anglo power structure, or in other words, white supremacy. Looking to evolve 
the style of horror writing for his generation, Lovecraft played on the emotions, anxieties, and current fears of his day. He was the first writer to mesh horror and science fiction. He was self-educated, and he comes from an upscale background, wealth, and social elites. After his father's and grandfather's death, Lovecraft and his mother fell into poverty. Her response to their conditions led to abuse, verbally and physically. She also raised him with her views, which constituted racism, anti-Semitic, as well as an elitist mind frame. Through his love of reading, perhaps due to his grandfather's extensive library and knack for telling chilling stories... Lovecraft developed into a premier writer. How did folklore become so prevalent in his work? When you talk about historical fiction, a lot of that is folklore. You know, it's, it's like, this is what they said happened in the books, but this is how the story was, was told, you know, by the people who lived it, not the people who recorded it. Lovecraft becomes an authority on supernatural folklore and horror stories, amongst other things. This places Lovecraft in a position to fulfill his goal to reconstruct the concept of horror stories, while using these stories to drive home his own ideological and traditional anxieties. What's more, even H.P. Lovecraft's story is told in the folkloric horror-style narrative, giving credence to the convergence in participatory culture we live in. The course of H.P. Lovecraft's life was altered by an unfortunate madness. In April of 1893, his father, a commercial traveler from the vicinity of Boston, was on business in Chicago. It was there that Winfield Scott Lovecraft experienced the general paralysis of the insane. Mythology and sacred aspect of Lovecraft country resonates in real life to a lot of scholars, enthusiasts, conspiracy theorists, and those who actually practice the magic and the traditions of Orisha. Well, actually, in the African-American community, especially those that are from the South, <coughs> more so um, the Southeast, you know, the Southeast of, uh, east of the Mississippi, you'll find that more black people of a certain age are familiar with, with the, their lines of magic. Their lines of their spirituality and their magic is usually incorporated in their day-to-day -day life. So it's not that unusual to find, you know, to hear about Aunt Bessie or, or Grandma Nellie or, you know, like that. So there's always one or two in the family that are connected to that magic. Some refer to it as historical fiction mixed with factual history. Others place it in the legendary category of folklore and beliefs. Bobby Hammett, a scholar of esoteric and occult knowledge, lecturer and published author states, And in order to dig deep into our origins, we have to rely on the mythology. First of all, this word mythology has been used to denote a bunch of untrue sayings or something that's not really, you know, not really valid and stuff. And that's what the white boy does to throw us off. When Gerald Manson tells you in Natural Genesis that mythology means mutu, which is truth, truth and spiritual teachings of history. And, um, um, but they have kind of defunct that. Meanwhile, he's, you can get a PhD in mythology in uh, the European in his schools. But yet, we're trained that those are just saying a bunch of crazy people and all types of stuff like that. So it gives you this particular psychological disadvantage mm -hmm. 
until you, if you, and not unless you look into this particular science and try to find out that in actuality they literally tell you mm-hmm. basically the history through the mythology. And this is the great thing about the series Lovecraft Country and how it utilizes folklore, legend, and the like. It always presents information where it's up to the receiver to qualify it as either fact, fiction, or rumor. <laughs> 